News for Jack's political analyst and director of JU's Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney, uh, joins us here on the morning show to talk about this. Rick, you know, I know the headline is Manafort, but isn't the really big story Papadopoulos? I mean, he admitted to lying, and that is politically explosive, and it also intimates that he's talking. I think that's true, Bruce. The indictment of Paul Manafort was widely expected. And if you look at the charges, they relate to things that have happened over the last decade. Very serious charges. But what was not expected yesterday, what took the White House by surprise, which took most of the country by surprise, was this guilty plea for George Papadopoulos. Very significant development. Now, the White House says a volunteer, low ranking. That's actually true. However, the allegations are serious. And with him, it's the problem the rest of them face. It wasn't his openness to collusion. It wasn't even collusion. It was the cover-up. He pled guilty to perjury, and that's one of the vulnerabilities here, is the cover-up. And by the way, it's not against the law to cooperate or do business with Russia. It's what happens afterwards when people start backtracking. Well, I think one of the big pieces of the national discussion that's misunderstood is this notion of collusion, as though that is a crime. I go back to law school, criminal law 101. Collusion itself is not a crime, nor cooperation. The problem, however, is that cover-up, perjury, obstruction of justice, conspiracy, those are crimes, and that's the vulnerability here. Now, there are those who said that this investigation, or who believe that this investigation is partisan, but just yesterday, Tony Podesta, who is a Democratic power lobbyist, stepped down because he found out he's part of this investigation. Of course, his brother John was the campaign chairman for the Hillary Clinton campaign. So this is across all political aisles. It is, and interesting, it's John Podesta's emails that were hacked by Russia. And Tony Podesta, his brother, actually may have been doing some lobbying work for the Ukraine. He just stepped down because of, it is a vast, it is an expanding investigation. For those who thought this was winding down, I suggest the actual opposite may be true. I think people also have to understand that regardless of what happens, while he's in office, Donald Trump cannot be indicted. He can be an unindicted co-conspirator, though. That's true. You, you can't indict a sitting president. You may remember with Richard Nixon, he was not indicted while he was in office. After he, after he left office, he could have been indicted and he was pardoned. However, these allegations potentially could form the basis we're getting ahead of ourselves for impeachment. But you cannot indict a sitting president. Now, what do you think the White House strategy should best be right now? I know that John Kelly came out and basically said this all happened before the Trump campaign. And then his presidential spokesperson, the president's presidential spokesperson, said, look, this has nothing to do with the president. Should they focus on, uh, on, on policy? If, if I was in the Trump White House, I would try to get tax reform passed. And by that, I mean I don't agree with the strategy of Steve Bannon, who yesterday very explosively was suggesting a very aggressive style and maybe cut off funding to the special counsel. I think that would be a big mistake. Instead, I think Ty Cobb, the lawyer for the president, is giving some good advice. I would not go on Twitter. I'd not be commenting about this investigation. I would move forward on tax reform. I would control the things I can control, do best what I can do best, but I would not get into that battle that Steve Bannon is suggesting. Robert Mueller is a prosecutor. You're a former prosecutor. I am a former prosecutor. He moved very quickly. Two-pronged question. Does that surprise you? And is this just the tip of the iceberg here in this investigation? First part, I think the speed with which he has moved has surprised many. It does show that he's using lots of information that came up before he was appointed, some of it going back to last January. Mueller is smart. He's got a good team. He's well-funded. He's moved very, very quickly. On the second question, very well could be the tip of the iceberg. At the plea bargain for Papadopoulos earlier this month, the federal prosecutor said this is a small part of a much bigger investigation. That's language that's talking about the tip of an iceberg. As they say on TV, stay tuned. More to come.